Okay, so remember, you can either choose to do your sketching planning on your paper drawing, or you can go on your plate. Just know that once it's on your plate, um, it's not going to be as easy to remove. So I would describe um, sketching it on your um, paper design a little more of a safer option, but neither, neither are too, too risky. But this is where you're going to get your Sharpie, and you've probably already outlined it on your plate, or be sure to do that before you start um, moving your hand across your plate because it will smudge. Um, and I'm looking at my reference photo to inform me on my mark making choices. Um, this is really a great opportunity to allow you to be more expressive and take cre make creative choices. Um, you know, you don't. This isn't going to necessarily be super realistic because it's got more of that illustrative, graphic design appearance as a print. So the first thing I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to identify the areas that I for sure know I want it just to be solid black. So that I would recommend as like your first step with um, doing your like design and choice of mark making for this is just really identify where are you going to have it be solid black, meaning you won't do any carving into that area. So it's like going to be your darkest value that you will have on your design. So I'm still kind of at the phase where I'm outlining my contour outline. Oh, I didn't. Like, my subject has clay all over their hand. Um, but I'm not really including that so much. I'm just kind of looking at the three-dimensional form at this moment of his fingers without including all of that um, extra detail for now. I uh, don't have an answer quite yet of what I'm going to do for that. The size I'm working with is, is larger than what, what you all are working with, just to kind of point that out. Oh, that's right. I was going to show another video of another artist who had taken their design and printed it on an inkjet printer and then um, it's, uh, like kind of adhered it to the plate and then from there carved out all the white areas. So there are so many different ways that you can approach printmaking. Uh, it's one of the like mass appeals I have like with, that I find appealing about printmaking is you can try so many different like methods to get your results. Alright, and I kind of an edge to my print. Here's another thing to consider. See how I'm drawing an edge along my print? Um, 
there's lots of different options for how you can handle the edge of a print. Maybe you include a frame that goes all the way around your print. Maybe your print's composition is going to not be a rectangle or square. Maybe it's going to, maybe within your print, you're going to um, have more of a like round design, but then maybe you'd want to include a frame. Um, I, I want to be sure to address some of those options that you could be um, including in your design. Um, I think I have some visual examples. I'm kind of noticing this thing right here. I might include it as well. So I have that. I have that. There's like a line here. And there's a line here. And it goes down there. Yeah, I kind I kind of, I'm adding more to my background than I did uh, the first time. So now I have some, I have something to work with there as far as what I'm going to do with my negative space. All right. So, so right there I've already kind of filled in some answers than what I had before. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to fill in where I know for sure I'm going to not carve in. So just kind of go for the obvious answers first. And like for me, even if there's a little bit of white in there, I know this part's going to be solid black. As well as, I, well, he's got some, he actually has some, like highlighted wrinkles in the t-shirt, so I do think I will include some of that to create a little bit of that folded fabric. And how I'll do that is I'll just, it's going to be the opposite here. Like I'll, I'm going to leave it like it's there, but I, it's going to be, I'm going to like use, it'll be like little thin white lines there. Kind of went over it so I can't see it as easily. So in some some parts of your design you might just have to like kind of mentally remember what you're intending here. There's a solid black there and then I have those wrinkles included. Oh, I forgot to include these contour lines. I'm going to do one there. All right, and then this is going to be solid black as well. Go for the easy answers first. Um, as you identify those, it helps you kind of start to connect the next choices, which is going to be more like kind of thinking. I'm thinking in like terms of value. Like, how do I create the different values? Um, I also am going to make this solid black around, like on the inside of this pot. But I may carve a little bit into it to create a sense of a value change. But for the most part, it's going to be pretty solid. Solid black there. Okay, where else? Um, his jeans here. I'm going to go. So that'll be pretty dark. All right, where else am I needing? Okay. Oh, I'm going to do some darker marks down kind of in the shadow of the apron here. Filling that in. I'm also going to now create a thicker line, like where there's a shadow of his arm that's sitting on the his apron. All right. So weighted line, when I say that, that's like literally creating thicker lines and thinner lines. Yes, you sure may. Um, so that's what I'm considering as well in my design. Um, okay. 
now I'm looking, oh, we're definitely going to make it solid dark in between these fingers to this point, and then I might carve in a little bit there. Same as here. And then I'm also going to do dark value here. Okay, now, now I'm going to be more about doing like hatching. So I'm going to start at the bottom with the potter's wheel where I have, it's like, it's a, a gradient from, it goes from light, very bright at the, the ridge of the potter's wheel, like the pan. And then it slowly goes to like a medium to a dark. So I'm going to think in terms of um, hatching and the distance between my hatch making marks. They'll be closer together towards the bottom where it's darker. I'll likely use, um, I don't know if I've told all of you this, but your carving tool that you will be working with um, has about five different sizes of tips. So that's going to give you some control with your mark making. So here I made my marks really close together so it's going to be darker. And now as I look at my reference photo, it's going to be more of a mid-tone and then that highlight. Um, and so I'm going to keep it moving in the same direction, but I'm going to make the marks further apart. To see if that kind of captures what I'm looking for. Now keep in mind, I'm putting dark mark marks down and then creating the light areas. When you go to actually carve, it's the opposite. You know, I'm, wherever I see white, I'm carving out. Um, so if you really like the idea of having a lot of planning and control, you could, you know, first kind of design on your sketch and then go over to your plate and do the same thing. Totally up to you. Um, okay, so that... That creates a bit, yeah, as I look at it, you can see it goes from like darker to lighter. And then here is that bright, I kind of wish I moved this up a little more. Maybe I could do that. I'm going to ignore it for now. Oh, I see I forgot this line here. And then I can do the same thing as well. You know, and then the, also the direction that I'm choosing to put my marks. Um, will also kind of differentiate one part of my design from another part of my design. So here I was doing diagonal this direction. Now I could go the opposite direction for my actual, um, what is this thing called? Uh, like it's this, like the, the base of the potter's wheel. Just to kind of differentiate between the two areas. And then I could go again here. Hmm. And then there's a real dark area, so I'm going to go closer. So you really become, you're kind of restricted with your mark making choices, and that's the creative challenge that you're being, um, being provided as an opportunity to think design-wise. Um, I could also be doing the same thing here. So when I say like contour lines, contour lines are going to be lines that move in the direction of the three-dimensional form that you're trying to create on a flat two-dimensional surface. So like I could, for contour lines for this vase that I'm, or pot, like I can now go like this direction, so because it, it's actually mimicking the three-dimensional form that this pot is. So that's kind of a way that you can create, um, like using line to sculpt. So as you look at that, um, if you look at my pot here, I switch directions because it's visually informing you that it's more of a, a, a soft, curved three-dimensional form. So think of line as that's kind of the tool that you're using to visually communicate to your audience what these forms are intended to look like. Um, and if you have areas that you're, you're having questions about, you know, maybe go to an, like kind of keep seeking out the, the answers or creating the answers that seem obvious to you. 
that would be my best advice and then work your way towards more of the challenges because kind of sometimes as you put visual answers down in some parts you will start to discover what you need to do next. Answers looking for them. Feel free to turn your page around. You'll be doing the same thing when you're printing your plate. You sure may. All right, looking for here. Okay, I'm gonna make this more solid black. keep working okay so now I'm gonna talk about like I'm gonna do the hands and again implied lines so I'm wanting to visually communicate that like my finger the fingers are three-dimensional and fingers tend to be more tubular you know like a tube so like I'm gonna do like archy lines that I would then carve out because I'm using that line to suggest that physical um, form that the fingers are taking on so um, I might kind of identify some darker areas to do thicker lines first so I'm just looking at the hands and I am going ahead and kind of identifying areas that I would like to kind of leave a little more of the plate there to create a darker value so that's more of that weighted line choices And this is what I kind of mean, like you can, like feel free to take risks, especially on the paper. The worst case scenario is you need to use the light box to retrace it and um, try again. We've got time. I'd rather have you take risks and learn from them than just play it safe. All right, and I'm looking. This is where I'm using my technique I learned from my painting professor to squint at what I'm looking at to really find the value because I'm even so this is a little bit of thicker line and blocking all at the same time but I'm wanting to sculpt and carve my three-dimensional looking forms I know there's a little bit of a fingernail there, so I'm just going to kind of include that information there. So there's lots of clay involved here, so I'm filling in some of this with what I'm assuming would be there. All right. Lots of kind of creases. Oh, I see. So just be patient. Really, really um, kind of tune in to what you see and then make those decisions of like what sort of marks. I mean, you're really your choices are a thick line, a thin line, hatching, or solid blocking. Um, those are going to be the bulk of your choices for mark making. I mean, do I attempt to try to show veins? I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to create kind of a shadow on this pinky. All right. And then this one. Put the fingernail info on there. Here's the sponge. I'm going to put like some. It'll be interesting to see how I can get that.
to get. See those knuckle wrinkles. In there and then I think gotta keep keep going with it. Implied contour line to show that it's a round tubular form. And then this maybe go thicker line. Okay. And then direction of lines, too, can kind of help differentiate from one area to the next. Like as I'm working with these hands, I think I'm going to put like carved lines that's going this way. We'll see. See how I feel about that. Mm, maybe. See, I'm not even, you know. Every time you decide to start making something, there are elements of like making choices and it might work out, it might not. But that's okay. So maybe I would make that like real bright. Oh, I, I, I just got, I just remember these are band-aids um, on his hands. So again, I don't have the full information. It's like covering up. And I really just don't think band-aids will, um, you know, it just won't really convey well to this. So I'll have to just kind of imagine what I'd see if there weren't band-aids there. So kind of relying on my understanding of value potentially, I guess, would be the, the trick. Oh, whoops. I like lost. Here, look at me. I was supposed to have the rest of the the potter's wheel <laughs> was supposed to be here. So I'll have to I will have to make like account for that. It's okay though. Not concerned. All right. So I did half the hands. I'm going to address the hair um, in case anybody is trying to figure out like a hair situation. And then I'll just make myself available to work with anyone who's having questions. Um, but I'm going to, a lot like how we make hair, we talked about it with the first project, I'm going to block in chunks that I see that are dark that I'm just going to not carve into to create some of that depth and value. So just generally, kind of, again, implied lines. I know I have to get his eyebrow in there too. Where does that go? It's kind of a darker area. Not going to reach to there. Not in the valley of his nose. Okay, what angle? Nose, and then this is a little bit of his 
mustache. might be how I'm doing the hair. Just swooping chunks with thicker streaks. I think what I will do is I can give you a note and um, then I think that I, I, it seems to be a successful way to do it. Okay. So give me one moment and we'll get that for you. And are we going to start carving? I think I'll, I'll demo the carving tomorrow. Because okay. I don't, how many of you are ready to start carving? So there's just, I'm just going to have you hang tight for another day. And, and, I'll, and I'll demo that tomorrow and get you started, just because there's safety factors on that one. And um, yeah, so, so if you're like super ready, we're trying to hang tight for a minute. Um, I'm gonna pause this.